heat with uh, temperature in KMT, but it's most likely just with heat and specific heat will recover temperature a little bit. Kinetic molecular theory helps us explain how things actually transfer heat. Answer these questions on Edpuzzle, and we'll move on along. So heat and temperature, related but not the same. So heat is the energy transferred between objects. So that is related to the idea of 5 kilojoules being transferred from the hot object to the cold object, while temperature is related to that measure of average kinetic energy that we've talked about already in this course. So, of course, if something's at a higher temperature, it has a higher kinetic energy per particle. Okay, So you can't have heat unless you have something else to transfer it to. Now, most likely in matter is always in contact with other types of matter, so this is almost always the case, except out in the deep, deep reaches of space. We will use, be using joule and kilojoules for energy, so keep that in mind that those are the energy units. So again, heat is the amount of energy transferred between two objects. Heat always flows from the higher temperature sample to the lower temperature sample. And this occurs by particle collisions. So if something is at a higher temperature, let's say 40 degrees Celsius, oops, 40 degrees Celsius, and let's say this is 10 degrees Celsius. If these were the same objects, let's say uh, both copper, the idea is that the one that is higher temperature is going to be moving faster with the big arrow here slower one with a small arrow. When they collide at the surface, these particles will come into contact, and when they collide just like billiard balls on a pool table, they transfer energy. The faster one will now be moving slower, and the slower one will be moving faster. This is meant to illustrate the ideas that at the end, these will come into contact and eventually probably end off at 25 degrees Celsius if everything else was the same. mass substance and everything else. If these were different masses, different substances, 25 degrees would not be their equilibrium point. They would happen at some other area. But we always have heat transfer from one to the other. When the temperature is the same, heat transfer stops. Much like pressure, when the pressure is the same on two sides of a barrier, then you have no change from one to the other. So again, Heat is the energy transferred, and we're going to utilize that to determine some key features as we go throughout. Uh, one other thing that gets mentioned from time to time is like heat content. So the idea is that these may be at the same temperature, but if we were like defrosting chicken or something in it, if we had one pound of chicken here, this would take a longer time to defrost than if we had one pound of chicken here because of the fact that there's more heat that this will drop its temperature slower than I should say, this one will drop its temperature slower than this one because of the fact that there's more heat available in this larger container. Now, between two different objects, different objects generally have a different specific heat. Different amounts of energy required to raise one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Now, heat capacity, you may have heard of throughout the across the internet, and you just have specific heat times the mass. So a piece of copper that's 50 grams has a lower heat capacity than something that has 1,000 grams of the same substance. So if you put in the same amount of heat, you see something with a large heat capacity will increase at a lower temperature than something with a small heat capacity. And so a heat capacity could be a very high specific heat in low mass, or any combinations of those. We won't get too much into that, but that plays a role in uh, heat transfer and trying to be able to uh, lower heat or remove heat from an object. The equation for specific heat, if you're trying to determine specific heat, Cp is specific heat, Q is heat, M, you know, is mass, delta T is change in temperature, so that's temperature final minor, minus temperature initial, the beginning temperature. Now quite often it's not too important we determine specific heat, it's more like we use it. 
So that's what will play as a role here. We're trying to determine how much heat is used, I shouldn't say used, absorbed or released during a transfer of energy. So different materials store energy in different amounts. Something like gold and water, equal in mass. However, if we were to try and heat them with equal amounts of energy, you could see the gold will heat up much higher temperature. Actually, you can't really see that, huh? Much higher temperature than it will for the water. This enables water to be able to absorb a lot of heat or require a lot of heat in order to raise its temperature. Now calculation is pretty straightforward. I still want you to solve for the variable first. This will play a big role in your everyday life of uh, academia and math. So I want you to continue this practice. You should be labeling all of your variables, known and unknown. Solve for the particular that you're looking for, and then be able to apply significant figures to get your answer. So let's take a look at example here. All right, so we have 85 grams heated from 30 degrees Celsius to 45. In that process, we know it absorbed 523 joules of heat. So we're trying to determine the specific heat of copper of this copper alloy. So I first want to start off with my equation, MCP delta T. Of course, these can be written in any order since they're all being multiplied. I know from my question, it's 523 joules. Oops. Joules. I know my mass is 85.0 grams. I know my CP is what I'm looking for. And I know my change in temperature. You should always be writing out what those temperatures are. So 45 degrees Celsius minus 30 degrees Celsius equals 15 degrees Celsius. So in my idea of looking for CP, that's what I'm going to be trying to find. So in order to determine CP, I want to divide both sides by M delta T. So CP is equal to M. Oh, I'm sorry. Erase equal to Q over mass times delta T. So now that I have my information here, I can substitute it in. Q is my 523 joules all over 85.0 grams times 15 degrees Celsius. And I can see my units are joules over grams times degrees Celsius grams times degrees Celsius, and significant figures would tell me 2, so 0 0.41 joules per grams degree Celsius. Let's take a look at another example. So if we took that same amount and then cooled it to 25 degrees Celsius, how much energy would it now have lost? So again, we start off Q equal to MCP delta T, and I've got my Q, my M, my CP now, and my delta T. So initially, we don't know what my energy is, joules, mass, still the 85 grams that I had before, my CP I now know, 0 0.41 joules per grams degree Celsius, and my change in temperature. Remember, it's temperature final minus temperature initial. So it is now 25 degrees Celsius. It was 45 degrees Celsius, which means my change in temperature is a negative 20 degrees Celsius. So now let's input this information in. Q is M. Whoop. 85 grams times my CP, 0 0.41 joules over grams degrees Celsius, times my change in temperature, which is a negative 20 degrees Celsius. You can see in the numerators and denominator, 
the Celsius cancels, grams cancels, leaving me only in joules. I get my significant figures in there. So that would leave me at around 700, but I need to show that at significant figures. So times 10 to the second joules. And you can see the negative. Uh, the negative when it refers to energy just means loss. So what was the energy change for the sample? It was a negative 700 joules. You can also say 700 joules were lost. Equal, those are equally fine, but when we look at two systems coming together, it does play a pretty big role in how those things are done. Take a moment to answer this question in Edpuzzle and uh, come back for the solution. All right, and here's your solution here. It's all pretty much laid out, uh, pretty easy. Again, Celsius and Kelvin, because we're looking at a change in temperature, can are interchanged. So you might see some specific heats using Kelvin. Some might be using degrees Celsius. Could also use kilojoules, uh, if so, if it really warrants it. But uh, often we'll see joules per gram Kelvin. Here's another for you to try. Try it. Add puzzle it. Come back for the solution. All right, here we are. Essentially putting down your information, plugging it in, sig figs, and done. All right, now we get into when there are two objects, this heat exchange, this heat transfer. So if Q times M times delta T times CP is the amount of heat for one object, the amount of object, the amount, sorry, the amount of heat released by one object is going to be equal to the amount of heat absorbed by another object, providing we take the big leap and say no heat was transferred to the surroundings. So the mass times delta T times CP of one object is going to be equal to the mass times delta T times CP of the second object. If everything was allowed enough time, equal temperatures of two different objects. In any case, you'll need to have all the variables, solve for the one you're looking for. Rearranging the equation with no numbers can be quite a challenge with this. A lot of variables, a lot of different parts. Remember, delta T is the temperature final minus the temperature initial and can be negative when you have something cooling. So this plays a big role in the idea that when you set this up, the thing that's cooling is going to be uh, losing heat while the thing gaining heat is going to increase. I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's take a look at this situation. You got a block of aluminum and a block or titanium plate. The aluminum block was hot, and what we're talking about is that the final temperature of both the plate and block had 17.8 degrees Celsius. What was the original temperature of the titanium plate? We're going to make the easy assumption that we didn't lose any heat to the surroundings. So this is going to be a pretty big problem, but we can utilize this and get right to it. So we first off want to list off all of our information for each of the substances. So we're going to title this one with aluminum. And so we've got the Q, we've got the M, CP, and delta T. So our heat, we don't actually know, but we know that it lost heat. So it's a negative value. So negative loss of heat. That's going to play a big role. We have 10.45 kilograms. We need this in grams because CP for aluminum is an amount in uh, grams. So that would be our 10,450 grams. Don't need to show work for that, but make sure you do get that correct. We look up our CP for aluminum, 0.897 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And our change in temperature. Now change in temperature is quite important. Remember it's final minus initial. So a 17.8 degrees Celsius and it started off at 75.2 degrees Celsius. So when we subtract that we get a negative 57.4 degrees Celsius. This is really the origin of the negative in our Q, because you can't have mass or CP be negative, but change in temperature can be. 
which is why the Q is negative. Now next we got titanium. Again, Q, M, C, P, delta T. So we know this is going to be a positive version of heat. Mass, we've got at 0 0.876 kilograms, going to grams, it's 876 grams. CP, 0 0.544 joules, grams, degrees Celsius. Change in temperature, 17.8 is the final temperature. And what we don't know is the initial temperature. So that's what we're trying to find. All right, so we need an equation to solve information for. So we have the mass of aluminum, specific heat of aluminum, change in temperature of aluminum. Now remember, this is going to be a negative value because of the fact it's losing heat. Is equal to the positive value of the mass of titanium, specific heat of titanium, change in temperature of titanium. Oh, yeah, T and T. So we want to solve for the change in temperature of titanium. So I can see that I'm just going to divide both sides by this here. Mass of titanium, titanium. So that cancels out. And we won't expand on that change in temperature of titanium. We'll plug it in as you'll see this will go. All right, so we're going to plug these values in now. So you've got a negative. 10,450 grams times my other part just putting in my units that I've clearly laid out so you can see that in organizing this can be mighty helpful in being able to plug numbers in and then you don't have to think as much you see my negatives will cancel out which makes sense Uh, 0 0.544 joules, grams, degrees Celsius. Multiplying all of that, I see that's my change in temperature for titanium, which I see is going to be 1130 with my sig figs, degrees Celsius. Now, change in temperature is that final minus initial, so I'm going to zoom in here. So I've got my 17.8 degrees Celsius minus my initial temperature is equal to 11.30 minus 17.8 on both sides. So that'll cancel out. And then I want to multiply both sides by a negative 1, so that's going to become positive. That's going to be the opposite. And I see my change in temperature is going to be equal to um, 1110 it's going to be negative 11, 10 degrees Celsius. Common decimal place is the uh, tens place in both. So that's what I round to, the tens place. And yes, I know a negative 11, 10 degrees Celsius can't be possible. Uh, based off absolute zero, but mathematically, this is where it comes out. And this is the slight issue when you make up your own problems uh, at what you get. All right, come and try this one. This one's different. This one's the most challenging you can come across. Give it a shot, um, and then afterwards, come back and uh, see how we do it. All right, so I'm going to suspect you struggled with this one. That's okay. This is as challenging as it gets. So let me walk you through it. So first off, you need to list off all of your stuff for aluminum. And we could see that where temperature final is unknown. Then you also do the same for titanium. You see temperature final is unknown. That is our X. They are both the same. That's where this plays a role. Now, enable to starting off with our equation and solving for the variable, this is more challenging because they have the same variable on both sides of the equation. So this is where I'll walk you through this. Let's see if I can make sure it looks okay. So I kind of color-coded what we're trying to find in green. That's the temperature final. So the left side is all aluminum. Right side is all titanium. 
So the first thing we need to do is distribute uh, the M and C's for both to the T's on, the, on both sides. And so I did that in this first step here. This first step here. So I distributed it all out. All right. Next, I wanted to get all of my TF's on the same side. So I see this one's being subtracted, or it has a negative, so I'm going to add it to both sides. This one is being subtracted, so I'm going to add it to both sides. So essentially, you're adding and making everything positive. That's generally a good sign. So I rewrote that all right here. So I have no TFs on this side, and I have TFs present on this side. Now I want to pull out the TFs to get this on the right side. The left side I'm just going to leave alone. Then I'm going to divide by what I pulled out on both sides, so that TF is equal to this combination here. As you can see, labeling organization is huge. Otherwise, you're going to do this all day long to try and get nowhere. Once I have all that, then I substitute all my values in. Keep in mind that uh, the 7608, this is all dealing with aluminum. This is all aluminum stuff, right? And that this is all titanium stuff. All titanium stuff. Down here, we've got aluminum stuff, and we've got titanium stuff. So the numbers are always sticking with the metal you've chosen. So you don't have a mix of like the mass of one metal and the specific heat of another metal. They're always just staying close. So I would always check your values to make sure they're always grouped as they should be. And once we plug it all in, I would use parentheses again in your calculator because if you put it in without those, you could easily get something wrong even though you set everything up right. And we get 83 degrees Celsius as our final answer. Come in with your questions, and I hope to see you soon.